sorry, this game's got nothing to do with casinos. No blackjack, free drinks, or showgirls here. Just sand. Likewise, if you're looking for some vaguely leonine electric-type Pokemon, look elsewhere, friend. While the occasional pin missile is available, you're really just rolling balls into more balls and firing balls at balls. And not even Electro Balls, which weren't even a thing until 5th Gen. Luxor 2 is another in that interminable line of PopCap-style puzzle games, which have been identified as neural parasites in some more civilized sections of the galaxy. They feed on the experienced and the neophyte alike, replacing Grey Matter with vaguely Egyptian-themed detritus. The gameplay is easy to grasp. There's a line of colored ski balls being pushed by a beetle-like creature, and you, and your arkanoid-looking paddle device thing of ancient Egypt, fire balls toward the lineup. Fortunately, you've got a color-coded targeting reticule for aiming. Get three in a row of the same color and they disappear, causing those in front of the reaction to inch backward while the rest of the stack catches up. Multiple reactions in short order can amplify this effect, causing the stack to backslide and freaking the heck out of that poor scarab. Look at him, he's just trying to do his job, maybe leverage this appearance into a better gig and you're undoing all of his hard work. Or so it had seemed. Really, it's just an abstraction for the purpose of a mind-melting puzzle game, one that's not particularly difficult, but almost criminally addictive. Perhaps it's because it's on the easier side, you feel like you're actually doing something important. When in fact, nothing can be further from the truth. There's something about the design of all these games, though, that promotes that feeling of outperforming your own expectation, or more accurately, your own understanding. You don't know exactly why these mechanics seem to be working in your favor, only that they are, and that's pretty cool. Not exactly the most compelling game, but don't tell that to anyone playing. You'll hit combos you never knew about, you'll get power-ups raining down from everywhere, you'll be promoted from farmer to merchant to the guy who pulls the brains out of mummies through the nose. All in a day's work for the ancestor to the Arkanoid paddle. Here's the thing about games like this. Much as I try to analyze them, much as I try to apply science and reason, I'm always overshooting it. The purpose of a game is to have fun, and games like this are almost supernaturally good at that. You can't really break it down better than that. They're designed to be fun, and they are fun. It's a simple premise that doesn't overcomplicate itself, or if it does overcomplicate itself, it errs on the side of fun and shiny explosions and validating the player. Like it or not, there are some significant lessons in game design to be learned from little Flash-originated diversions like this. After all, when you see numbers about the ridiculous masses of people who play games these days, they're factoring in the pull of these magnets right here. This version of Luxor is available for PC via your favorite Flash Portal Mabob, Xbox 360 and iOS, and it was also released as Luxor Pharaoh's Challenge for the DS, PSP, Wii, and PS2. Unfortunately, no matter how much you play, you still have to pay for your drinks.